Um, I really liked Jack's uh, description of why he's here. Um, why the electric coin company does what we do is to empower everyone in the world with economic freedom. In support of that mission, we contribute to and support a fair and open currency to protect the freedom, dignity, consent, and security of people all over the world. And what we say is that our North Star is to deliver a world-class user experience for Zek. So uh, this 14, next 14 minutes is a summary of what we've done uh, since Zcon 3, uh, and then where we're at and what, what we're doing now and how you can help. Um, so since Zcon 3, uh, the, a big thing that happened was the so-called sandblasting. Uh, some people say that it's a spam attack, but I don't like to say that because I don't know the intentions or exactly what the users are doing. Um, but starting around Zcon 3, there's been a really high load of um, shielded transactions getting added to the blockchain. And once that started happening, uh, all the software fell over, which is, which is what I expect. Um, I have a rule that whenever something scales up by 10x, then everything breaks and you have to fix it, and that's what happened. Um, so our team at Electric Coin Company, uh, the first thing we did was upgrade Zcashd. Zcashd is the full node software that everything in the Zcash network relies on. Um, so we made a whole bunch of optimizations and bug fixes uh, for bugs or performance issues that were revealed by this new 10x or however much uh, increased load. And uh, that, the result of that is that uh, the, the Zcash network was able to keep going, so all the centralized exchanges and miners and light wallet Ds and block explorers and um, business, businesses that integrate with Zcash and everything upgraded to the upgrades to Zcash D that we made and were able to continue processing the new heavier blockchain. And then something else we've done uh, since Zcon 3 is we specified and implemented uh, and debugged and deployed the proportional fees, um, which is originally proposed by Audi from Nighthawk as a Zcash improvement proposal. Um, but that took a lot of work. Um, and we deployed that. It's optional, by the way, for like a backwards compatibility process so that it doesn't, um, the, the deployment of this new proportional fees doesn't break too many things along the way. Um, but empirically, as soon as we did that, the, the high load reduced and changed. Um, and that, that load having gone down has also helped more things start working again. Um, so along the way, we got this security report from this security company named Halborn. They had found a bug in, that was in the old Bitcoin code base and that Zcash D as well as 200 or something other coins around the world had cloned that code base and had the same bug. And um, so we, uh, we have a good, like pretty well-oiled practice at the electric coin company of um, dropping everything and diagnosing exactly who might be vulnerable and exactly what the impact would be if this kind of security bug were uh, exploited. Um, it turned out that after we had done a lot of diagnosis and, and, and remediation, it turned out that nobody was in very much danger, probably, uh, but it took quite a lot of work to make sure of that and to make sure that we deployed the, the fix so that if there was a danger, our users would be protected. And there was a, an eye-opening thing that I learned out of this, which is that those security consulting company, Halborn, that was organizing that, told us something like, Zcash is the only one out of those 200 coins who went ahead and fixed this rapidly. Uh, a lot of the other ones... Yeah. yeah, I was really proud of our team. This is, the, uh, this is a pattern. Um, there's always bugs in software, and um, it's really uh, uh, reassuring to me that we have a really high-quality team uh, within ECC, and we also collaborated with... Uh, the Cash Foundation engineers and Taylor Hornby, the, the independent security person. Um, but yeah, so 
this thing always happens, like this kind of thing always happens. There's always bugs or potential bugs, and uh, uh, I, I always feel really relieved when I think, okay, my team is on it. Um, don't have to stay awake at night wondering what's going to happen. Uh, yeah, so those Hellburn people also said, some, like, I remember we were like 90 days ahead. The, the other coins and the Hellborn researchers themselves kept asking us to hold off and don't fix it too fast so that other people would have time to catch up. And we basically negotiated with them and told them, no, we're going to go ahead and fix it, and those other people will just have to deal. Um, and then something else we've been doing that's... Uh, uh, Another thing in the category of sort of invisible work that ECC has been doing is auditing the Rust dependencies. Um, security, computer security is one of those things where when it goes right, nobody notices and doesn't realize that you did anything. Um, but uh, there's a, a widespread uh, issue in the whole world of computers nowadays called supply chain attacks or supply chain dependencies. And uh, we've, been, we've been doing something I'm really proud of and happy about, which is inspecting all of the different code bases that Zcash D and other Zcash software depend on. Um, and we've posted all our results. You can, I don't have a link here, but you can find on GitHub the, uh, the results of that. Okay, it's already been like, what is this counting down? It says I have three minutes and 30 seconds. Is that right? All right, well. Okay, for the next 15 slides real fast, here's a bunch of other stuff we did. We got Light Wallet D running and so forth, and uh, we've been working really hard on optimizing the uh, software that several wallets and our own wallet and uh, Zebra and some others depend on uh, to make it more efficient. And uh, that's almost ready. We've been doing that thing where we find one last bug, and then we fix that, and then we find one more one last bug, and then we fix that. Uh, but as far as I know, there's no more bugs. So uh, this SDKs and, and, and libraries are, should be ready for everyone else to use like any day now. And we've made our own beta version of a, a wallet, um, which I'm really excited about because I get to uh, be right in the feedback loop of all the user complaints. So if you want to be one of these users helping us find bugs, then come up to me and I'll give you uh, access to the wallet. It's very rough, but uh, um, I'd really like to hear your thoughts about it when you try to install it and everything. Okay, I got two minutes and 20 seconds. So what we're doing now, the main theme is decentralized Zcash and focus ECC. And the theme is, uh, at ECC, we've been doing a lot of different things and, and kind of spreading ourselves too thin for many years. And it's going to be better both for Zcash as an ecosystem, as a community, and also for ECC if we refactor who does what. In particular, there's a bunch of things that it's going to be better for Zcash that the, the, everyone in the Zcash ecosystem doesn't depend ex solely on ECC, so it's not a single point of failure for these things. Um, and that's a major theme that I want to talk to everyone about uh, at this conference is exactly what those things are and how you can help and what's the process of transitioning from everyone hitting up ECC for those things to hitting up some more decentralized structure for those things. And then that leaves only a few things so that ECC can do fewer things better and faster. Um, Got to skip ahead. Here's the four things that we want to focus on. Uh, the fifth thing here is transitioning the other things so they don't drop on the floor. But the four things that, that we're prioritizing are making progress on proof of stake, making our own wallet so that we get live interactive learning from users as we go, the developer tools that I mentioned that other wallets and Zebra use, uh, we're going to prioritize continuing to improve that, um, and the US-based policy work all right, now it says I have five minutes and 28 seconds. Okay, fine, fine. I'll just keep going until that counts down. Um, so since Econ 3, uh, Nate Wilcox, the, the chief researcher at ECC, has been studying proof of stake and how to transition from the current Zcash proof of work protocol to a proof of stake protocol. And the most recent thing is he just published uh, a proposal or a pre-proposal called the trailing finality layer, which is a way to make hybrid proof of work, proof of stake as an intermediate step. Um, it at least partially, if not wholly, follows the Ethereum transition, which was successful so far. Um, 
Previously, we, he, he, Nate, also came up with the concept of the Zcash Posterity Fund, which Shielded Labs adopted and renamed to the Zcash Sustainability Fund, um, which is related, but not the same thing as proof of stake, but it's complementary, I guess. All right, so our wallet, my main goal is just to have this live ongoing feedback loop so that we learn and improve from live users uh, day and night. Um, the first thing, so I've got a beta you can try right now. It's really rough, but uh, come up to me. The, um, the first improvement that we intend to deploy shortly for Zashi, it's called Zashi. Zashi. Like here, this is what it looks like. This is our, our new wallet. I'm really excited about it. Um, the first thing that we are about to deploy for both the software tools that everyone else relies on, or that a lot of other people rely on, and for our wallet, Zashi, is called Spend Before Sync, because as every Zcash user knows, syncing is a pain in the butt. And um, so we have been working really hard on speeding up syncing, but we also have an even better idea. Instead of fast syncing, make it so that you can actually use the wallet and receive and send money without waiting for syncing to complete. So then syncing just be like a side a background thought that you don't have to worry about. Um, yep, I already talked about that. So the fourth thing that we're doing up there on, on our list of four things is US policy work. Um, we have sacrificed a whole bunch of international work on like connecting with uh, exchanges in all different countries and the regulators and law enforcement and policymakers in all different countries. But we're doing so great at the US policy work that we're keeping going. Uh, you'll hear about a lot about it on stage, um, but we're, our regular podcast is the most, is totally the number one most widely um, important podcast on the topic of crypto policy in general. Not just privacy, not just Zcash or anything, but like everyone who cares about crypto and how the United States government manages and interacts with it uh, watches this podcast. Um, and we have these regular meetings in Washington, D.C. that Paul Brigner hosts, and you'll hear more about that. Oh yeah, so there's one more thing that I really wanted to tell you about, but our, our partner uh, begged us not to speak, not to breathe a word of it, so stay tuned, um, but there's another thing coming soon. Okay, so good, I have one minute and 54 seconds. Um, the, the, the thing that I most want to get out of Zcon is connecting with people who uh, are depending on ECC for software or support or uh, other kinds of work, and that you wanna know, are we gonna keep doing that or are we gonna shift it to some more decentralized structure, and if so, what? Also, people who wanna help with this decentralized structure. There's a lot of things outside of the four focus areas that I just listed. Um, a great big one, there's, there's at least two great big ones, but there's probably more because what I keep experiencing is <laughs> people saying, Dang it, why isn't ECC doing better at X? And I'm like, oh yeah, X, okay, that's like the 20th thing on the list of things that people are depending on us for. So if you're like, if you have needs, please come up to me and let's talk about that. And also, if you wanna help with people's needs, let's talk about that. But the two big ones, I have 50 seconds, the two biggest buckets of things that ECC has historically done and that we need to decentralize, both for the resilience of Zcash and for the effectiveness of ECC, one is all the digital properties, the website, the Twitter, the Cypherpunk Zero NFT, um, and everything that comes with that. Uh, that's, it's kind of daunting, like I think to myself, hey, websites, I've put up websites before myself. You run Nginx and you edit the HTML files or whatever, but uh, in the modern day, there's a lot that goes into it and we wanna follow the, okay, I've got 15 seconds. We wanna follow the model of the Ethereum Foundation where the community submits content and maintains the content on the website. And the other big category is Zcashd. Everyone depends on Zcashd for everything and that's a lot. So if you depend on Zcashd or if you wanna help, let's talk about that. Thank you for listening. Can't wait to talk to you at the conference.
And next up, we have Jonathan from Kedit. Kedit have been working on Zcash Shielded Assets, which will be the first uh, significant functional update to the Zcash uh, blockchain since it was launched. Take it away, Jonathan. Hi, everybody. So thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting us to uh, this great conference. Uh, historically, we've actually been invited to all the Zcash conferences uh, and have been in touch with Zcash before Zcon Zero even. Uh, so there's a, a strong tie between Kedit and Zcash running for now many years. Uh, I want to quickly give you updates on uh, what we do, what, we're, uh, what we want to be doing. There are dedicated sessions during Zcon for uh, diving in, so these are going to be headlines. Uh, but just maybe to give you a, a brief sense of uh, who Kedit is or what is Kedit, so that you, uh, uh, you can understand our connection to this ecosystem. This is uh, the first time that we get to, uh, to join the talks about the ecosystem as like a, you know, a big part of, uh, of what's happening in Zcash. And it's a lot of responsibility. We, we now are part of that decentralized effort to, uh, to make Zcash uh, thrive. And the main thing that uh, at Kedit we connect uh, and intersect with this community is the technological excellence. Uh, this is the, by far the biggest thing that has attracted us to this ecosystem. We, uh, from the very first day, have witnessed all these efforts to make the, the algorithms, the tools, the science top-notch. Uh, and if I give a, a preview, uh, you have done in ECC, Zuko, uh, some uh, more work than what you've described. You also supported the interaction with the ZSA uh, work so that we, we got to experience this top-notch uh, quality of engineering giving us feedback on what we're doing and iterating. Uh, so we're, we're strongly connected to, to that aspect of, um, uh, I'd say, authenticity in engineering. You're, you don't put under the rug things that are uh, really important. That piece about uh, looking at the, the rust dependencies, really for the rest of the world as well, is, is an example of that. Uh, so uh, Kedit has been working much more in the enterprise space. We have an aspect that is, uh, you know, working with government. We worked at DARPA. Uh, we were part of the World Economic Forum at some point, uh, the, describing to them what can be used, uh, what, what, how privacy can be used to uh, you know, advance uh, uh, freedom of, uh, of people and, and, uh, and their right. Um, and in Israel, so the, the company is based in Tel Aviv. In Israel, we've been talking to regulators, uh, the SEC. We did a sort of hackathon to explain to them how blockchain works. We're, we're, we have legs in many aspects of this uh, blockchain ecosystem, but a lot of work with, let's say, uh, institutions and, and uh, not, not the traditional areas that uh, the, the Zcash, uh, Zcash community is uh, hanging out with. Uh, nevertheless, o over those years, we've, we've uh, accumulated experience in the particular, uh, let's say, uh, feature set that's required for asset transfer over Zcash. We've built tools. We've also explored other areas like uh, private set intersection and other uh, cryptographies outside of zero knowledge, but we kept coming back to uh, moving assets on a blockchain with full privacy is important. And in Zcash, it was pretty obvious that moving only Zec on the Zcash uh, network can uh, start to become limiting. There's a way to augment the usefulness of the Zcash ecosystem if you can issue other types of assets. So that's, that was the the start of uh, the proposal of ZSA, Zcash Shielded Assets. And I'm really happy to say that uh, after about a year and some later uh, of work, 
we're now at the stage where we have the first um, you know, concrete implementation of ZSA running. And uh, the work that we've done with, uh, in collaboration with the rest of the ecosystem has allowed us to uh, complete the first chunk, which is have a kind of alpha version of ZSA. And you will have a deeper explanation of all these pieces by the team. Uh, shout out to Pablo, who runs this team, and uh, you know, uh, from Kedit, who uh, is uh, coordinating and building uh, all of this with, with our team. Uh, one thing that's important to note is that when you're dealing with developing for an ecosystem that is still on the move, uh, all those features that Zuko listed earlier, all, the, all these progress that has been made uh, to the ecosystem, when we're developing ZSA, we now need to catch up to that because we branched off, did some work, but then the underlying libraries and even you know, fee structure, things are moving. And so it, we ended up uh, writing the zip and the implementations almost twice in order to achieve a level that's close to, uh, to real time. Uh, and we also understood that in order to actually bring this to production, there's a whole chunk of work of integration with what's called NU6 that needs to happen. And so the next, uh, the next few weeks and months are going to be about bringing out the work that we've done to the community so that you can start seeing the interfaces and uh, what it looks like to issue an asset to move an asset around, uh, to burn it, and, uh, and kind of play with ZSAs. And we are doing the work to uh, start bringing this into the uh, you know, mainnet Zcash at some point. The, uh, so you're going to have, during the, the, this conference, both a dive on what we've achieved so far, and a description of uh, what it's going to look like to put it in mainnet. A big piece of, uh, of the next, uh, or let's say the next phases, is introducing asset swaps, because the usefulness of an asset is uh, uh, yet more augmented when you can swap the assets uh, on, on a blockchain in, a, in one transaction. And there's a whole area of development that you will also hear that's coming up in, in the, next, uh, the next few months. Uh, something important, this is all financed by the Zcash community, uh, the Zcash ecosystem, uh, through those grants. And uh, I've been asked to participate in, in panels describing uh, our views. You can imagine that, you know, we. We are uh, grants recipients. Our views are that this enables us to do this work. And uh, I will probably have a very consistent uh, uh, responses to those questions when asked on, on panels. All of this is possible because uh, uh, Zcash holders are, in a sense, paying a tax to develop uh, the, the next phases of, uh, of Zcash. And there's a whole organization in place to try to figure out what is the most valuable uh, development that can happen for the Zcash ecosystem. And we're very happy that uh, we were able to uh, you know, join forces and be part of this ecosystem. Um, one thing about what's coming up next, I think that uh, if the ecosystem wants to grow and use those techniques, ZSA and others, uh, we need to look a little bit more broader than just the US. And I think as a company from Tel Aviv, we have that role of uh, trying to provide an, an outside view to the, the community. And uh, I believe that this goes through an, uh, uh, an area that is not in the comfort zone of this community at all, which is uh, exactly the compatibility with exchanges and the conversations about you know, interactions with law enforcement and regulations that try to look at Zcash and, and uh, 
uh, understand how do you deal with a currency that's fully anonymous. I think that uh, we, uh, as a community, we have, first of all, we have the luck that uh, this is not, uh, the, the ZEC token is not one of those tokens on the SEC uh, targets because the mechanism by which uh, ZEC was introduced is, uh, is in the clear. So there's no, that battle at least is not really uh, a battle. But uh, if we want to be robust to, uh, to regulators all around the world, we need to address the fact that uh, regulated exchanges are look, looking at transactions from Zcash and saying, well, how do we deal with you know, provenance, uh, I, questions of identity, and, and these related questions. And so I believe that uh, using ZSA, you can you know, uh, have that conversation orthogonal to ZEC, to ZEC. You can have tokens where you decide that opt-in, uh, these tokens are more compatible with what exchanges are expecting, have more features that, uh, that help exchanges understand who is in front of them when that user uh, wants to be identified. And I think that there's a, there's a space for these conversations to happen in the ecosystem so that the uh, Zcash ecosystem as a whole becomes more robust. Uh, so I... Increasingly, I, uh, I will be, uh, uh, let's say, advocating for that part of conversation to happen in, in the space. I say it's uncomfortable because at the core, this is one of the only ecosystems that is a counterweight to all those oppressive things and intrusive things that we hear, and we have to keep this force. You don't want to introduce anything that, uh, you know, obliterates the, this core strength that Zcash has, which is users have control over who sees what they're doing. This has to stay. And you don't want to, uh, you know, slide into the even possibility of mass surveillance or anything like that. But at the same time, we do need to acknowledge that we want as a community to uh, repel people that are using these techniques against, uh, you know, uh, for, for nefarious uh, purposes. And if there's a consensus on how, t what are the extreme cases where you do want some interaction with, you know, authorities, law enforcement, etc., what are the mechanisms that still keep our core uh, values and our core, uh, you know, assurances? but make this robust to attacks from regulators and, and permit interactions uh, with law enforcement. So all of this to say that uh, I see ZSA as a place where we augment the, the uh, usefulness of Zcash in general, and we permit the uh, uh, experiments that I believe can make this even more impactful uh, in, in the broader, uh, in all the world. Um, I have one and a half minutes left, uh, maybe again to thank the organizers of, uh, of this event. It's, uh, I, last year in Vegas was really cool. Uh, this is already topping it, uh, and I uh, can't wait to see where this is going. And uh, maybe one thing when you're hearing our, uh, our talks about uh, what we've achieved and, and the demos, don't hesitate to ask questions on how you can take the tools and use them because now is the time for feedback on uh, what we've built. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jonathan. Next up, we have Jason from the Zcash Community Grants Committee to tell us what they've been up to over the past year. Hey, everybody. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm going to give an overview about the program and then give you an update on what we've been up to. 
Um, so my name is Jason McGee. I'm one of five members of the Zcash Community Grants Committee. Um, Brian, Michael, and I have been committee members since January 2022. Um, Amber joined in 23, and G Guy started in July. Uh, so ZCG is a five-person committee. We serve annual terms, and um, elections are staggered now. Three seats are available in January, two in July. Um, the committee is elected by the Zcash Community Advisory Panel, Zcap. Uh, virtually anyone can run to be a member. You can self-nominate or you can be nominated by another community member. The only restriction is you have to um, go through the KYC process from the Zcash Foundation if you want to get paid. <laughs> um, so the program was established in 2020 as the Major Grant Review Committee. It's gone through a couple name changes. It was ZOMG for a while, and then we decided Zcash Community Grants sounded better. Um, ZCG receives the largest allocation of the Dev Fund, 40% um, of the block reward, which is 420,000 ZEC over the course of four years. Um, ZCG is a committee under the foundation. It is not a separate organization. The foundation administers the program. They custody the funds and disperse them. Um, but the decisions that we make as committee members are completely independent. Um, we consider ourselves representatives of the community, and community input is one factor that we weigh when we make decisions on grants. A um, little bit about our meetings. So we meet on a weekly basis to discuss open grants and our, our various programs. Then we meet with the Zcash Foundation biweekly to vote on record. And then our meetings are, um, you know, they, they're meet, super detailed meeting minutes that are published to the forum where you can, you know, understand the reasoning for each of our decisions. Um, so our mission is to fund independent teams to perform ongoing development for the public good of the Zcash ecosystem. We fund projects that, are, that advance the usability, security, privacy, and adoption of Zcash. These projects can be technical or not technical, so long as they're designed to help Zcash succeed. Um, so this is just a quick review of how we make decisions. After the applicant submits the grant, we give the community time to provide feedback. We use the Zcash community forum, and it can be a pretty rough place. Um, there's a few trolls there with loud voices. Um, but for the most part, we get good feedback from community members. From there, we deliberate and the merits of the proposal. We assess whether or not it's within the scope of something we want to fund. Um, if it's technical, we might set up calls with ecosystem engineers. Um, you know, if we have questions for the applicant, we might set up a call with them. Um, and then from there, we make a decision, and that decision is based off of majority vote. So how much have we spent? Since inception, the program has allocated $11.9 million. 94% of that has gone towards major grants. 3% has gone towards minor grants. And minor grants are things like conference sponsorships, the Zcash podcast, community resources like Alpha Day. Um, and then we've also allocated a small percentage of funds to dedicated resources and our global ambassador program, and I'll explain those a bit later in the presentation. Um, so these are our top five grant recipients. Together, they have received almost 68% of the total funds that we've allocated. These are all long-term, ongoing projects. So Kedit's building uh, Zcash shielded assets, as Jonathan mentioned. Um, these will allow for things like private stable coins and private Bitcoin to exist on top of Zcash, as well as other assets and NFTs. Um, Zcash Media creates high quality educational videos about Zcash. Um, they've released two documentaries so far, which were well received, and um, that was last year, and then this year they're working to release 10 more, uh, and they'll start distributing those in the fall. Um, Tor is working on a project called Arty, and it's a rewrite of the Tor protocol in Rust, and it can be used to uh, bring network-level privacy to Zcash. For Nighthawk, about 60% of the grants have gone to mobile wallet development, and then the other half was split between um, 
Thor chain integration, and then half going to infrastructure for LightWallet D and Zcash Block Explorer. Uh, Equilibrium Group, they've received a series of grants for Cigarette, which um, is a network test suite for Zcash D and ZebraD nodes. So what types of projects have we funded? So this slide shows how we've allocated funds by category or type. 25% um, have gone to protocol or specifically Zcash shielded assets. Wallets are the second biggest category. They include all four of the major mobile wallets, which are Nighthawk, YWallet, Zec Wallet, Zingo. Um, infrastructure includes things like Ziggurat, the Zcash Uni FFI library, the Avalanche subnet uh, bridge. R&D are like Tor, media self-explanatory. Non-wallet apps are things like Free to Z, Zec Pages, Zigo. And then integrations are um, primarily ThorChain and BTC Pay Server. Um, yeah, so community is our global ambassador program, Zec Hub, uh, Zcash Brazil, and then dedicated resources. Um, when I think that the allocation seems pretty reasonable. Um, you know, basically we get grants in randomly and then have to decide. So it's not like we seek out, like, to fill these allocations. Um, so we're going to start including this data in our dashboard, we'll be, and it'll be posted along with our meeting minutes to the forum. It's a great way to see how we're allocating funding on an ongoing basis. Um, so we wanted to go through and highlight some of our favorite grants and grantees from the past year that haven't already been mentioned. Um, Han is a community favorite. His Y wallet has been very dependable despite performance issues other wallets have experienced. It was our first ever retroactive grant, and what that means is he built the project, he built the wallet before you know, applying for the grant. Um, Han also just finished up a project that allows uh, users to store shielded Zek on a Ledger device. We're just waiting on Ledger to accept the app. Uh, next up, Zek Hub. This started as Ian Sackstetter's side project while he was working at ECC. It originally consisted of a podcast and informational resources, and it's developed into a decentralized platform where contributors can collaborate to create educational content. Um, the content they create is very impressive. If you have the opportunity, check out the video comparing on-chain privacy technologies. It's just, it's awesome. Um, there's more than a dozen active contributors, and they offer bounties so anyone can get involved and get paid to participate. Um, all governance decisions are made by a 10-person DAO. So free to z is Zcash's social media platform. It's super popular, especially in the Spanish community in Venezuela. Um, it started out <laughs> as a peer-to-peer -peer funding, fundraising platform, and I've seen people raise money to get a new bike or a computer. Uh, one person was able to get enough money to um, purchase like cancer treatment medication for his mother. Um, people now use it, it, the functionality has expanded, so people now use it for blog posts, live streams. One guy's offering guitar lessons, um, and you know, the live streaming is pretty popular. I think the Zcash Foundation's AV Club does their meetings on there. So if you haven't had the opportunity to check it out, definitely do so. Um, next, Zingo. So Zec Wallet was one of the early ZOMG grants, and it was the first mobile wallet to support shielded sapling transactions. After Aditya started, stopped supporting Zec Wallet, uh, Zonkis stepped up, he forked it, he created Zingo, and then he added support for unified addresses in the Orchard Pool. Um, the app has some really cool features like um, the sync and rescan report. Um, but Zonkis is all about authentic financial insights, so he wants like, the app to be more than just a wallet, but a tool that helps people better understand and manage their finances. So, you know, we look forward to seeing how this project progresses. Um, dedicated resources. So we have community resources, and then we have ZCG resources. So these are resources that we, we bring on people as independent contractors for full or part-time roles. Um, for example, ZK Squirrel, he's our community 
note taker. He attends the biweekly um, arborist calls, summarizes the key takeaways, and then posts them to GitHub. They're super convenient. Um, Taylor serves as the ecosystem security lead. He's audited a number of the projects that um, we funded, including YWallet, Zigo, LightWallet D, and a few others. Um, he's found some high severity critical bugs, and some of these, like, they're either high severity or critical, and some um, can compromise privacy or put funds at risk. Um, so this has been a great service to provide because otherwise, you know, developers would have to fund independent audits on their own. Uh, Ying Tong came in as the Halo 2 community manager, and we just brought Paku on as the um, community wallet developer starting August 1st. He's going to work with um, Nighthawk and, and also Zingo, and among other things. So, one sec. So, next up is our global ambassador program. So, um, ambassadors lead activities that, you, basically there's two things that we wanted the ambassadors to do. Basically help drive user adoption and build um, new Zcash communities all over the world. We have ambassadors in 14 different countries on five continents, including places like India, Venezuela, Saudi Arabia, South Korea, um, and just one sec. And so the primary activities that they do are like meetups, wallet onboarding events, content creation, translation. They receive a $1,000 um, stipend to support and reward their efforts. And some of the communities have actually become very vibrant. Like the community in Latin America is very large. The Spanish-speaking community is super active. They have their own website, podcasts, blog articles, education programs. Um, and additionally, Zcash Brazil spun off from the program. They submitted their own grant proposal, and now they're just doing an awesome job um, representing Zcash in Brazil at all sorts of different events. Um, so here's a couple of photos. The photo on the left is from Madison, who's our um, San Diego ambassador, like in the US. Um, she works at Edge. So she hosted a Zcash Focus pottery class where they discussed Zcash, made mugs, spoons, plates. Um, I went to one of her meetups in San Diego with the Zcash media team. We watched a couple videos, um, had a great discussion afterwards, and it was a lot of fun. Um, the second picture is from our Nigerian ambassador, Chidi. Um, he does a lot of physical meetups and education events um, to teach people about Zcash. He also sponsored a local soccer team and got them Zcash jerseys. So, what has ZCG accomplished? Um, we've, bought, we've brought in a number of teams from different parts of the world to work on long-term, ongoing projects. We've also helped build vibrant communities in places like Brazil, South Korea, and Venezuela. And we believe that these contributors make Zcash more decentralized and resilient. Um, we're also the only organization that is constantly reallocating block rewards to other areas of the ecosystem. And that allows us to not only fund interesting projects, but also fill gaps that emerge from unexpected events like the ECC restructuring that happened earlier this year. Um, we were able to bring on Beth to continue to focus on partnerships and Paku to help with wall development. Uh, we're also the most, like, hands down, the most transparent organization in the Zcash ecosystem. Like, the entire grant process plays out live on the forum. All of our key decisions and reasoning are memorialized in our minutes. Again, you have to check them out. They're super detailed. Um, but there's also a built-in accountability mechanism where if you don't like us or the decisions we make, you can vote us off the committee. And, you know, you obviously can't do that with other organizations. Um, so this is a statement that we wrote on our on the Dev Fund 2024, um, our 2.0. So currently the community is discussing whether to continue the Dev Fund after the next halving, and um, you know we believe that ZCG plays an important role in the ecosystem. And if it's continued, then we think that the 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 committee believes that the ZCG program should continue to receive the largest allocation, so we can continue to fill our mission and help decentralize Zcash. 
Um, wow, that's like perfect timing. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess um, I do want to say a thank you to the Zcash Foundation for all the support they provide. Um, Jack, Alex, Danica, Deidre, Dan, you guys are awesome, so thank you. Thank you, Jason. And next up, you have me again. Giving an update on the Zcash Foundation. Big news from the past year is that we have done a stable release of Zebra. So Zcash now has a second Zcash node implementation. <laughs> Great. I did think that the little ta-da icon was uh, just a little bit subtle, so I thought uh, party Zebra was more appropriate. You know, for those of you who, who aren't aware, uh, Zcash was originally built on top of the Bitcoin code base, and that code base has now been around for 15 years. It's written in C++. It's beginning to show, well, I think it's been showing its age for quite some time, and it's been described by one of the ECC engineers as a C++ hellscape. So Zebra is the mechanism by which we're going to escape that hellscape. It's written in a modern programming language called Rust, which is uh, more memory safe than C++. It's got a modular architecture, and um, it's basically going to provide the foundation for building, developing, growing, and improving Zcash over the next 15 years. And who knows what technology would look like by then. But for now, um, it's out there. It's been audited. There were no major issues found, which is a, a massive um, you know, kudos to to the Zcash Foundation engineers for successfully building something that complex without, without any major issues. And um, it addresses a subset of the use cases that Zcash D does. You can use it to obviously help maintain the Zcash network, to validate the blockchain, to uh, it gossips and uh, spreads unconfirmed transactions and blocks. You can use it as a backend for light wallet D. So if you are one of the uh, wallet teams that is running a light wallet infrastructure, you can use it instead of Zcash D to back end your light wallet D. Or if you are the sort of person who wants to run your own uh, light wallet D, then you can, you can also use it. And finally, if you're a miner, you can use it to generate block templates for mining. Now, as I said, Zcash is modular. Um, I, like I said, I think of it as a foundation for building uh, forward into the future, and this is the functionality that currently exists. The big question is, what should we do next? And there's a various ideas about what other functionality we should, we should build in. And if you have strong feelings about any of these, I think there's a poll rolling, rolling in the Hoover app right now. And also feel free to grab us and, and let us know what you think, uh, what functionality you think we should add to Zebra next. And um, it would be remiss of me to not acknowledge the massive contribution that the ECC engineers made to the development of Zebra. First of all, uh, Zebra relies heavily on various Rust libraries that have been developed by ECC, and also they were um, a huge help in terms of understanding some of the undoc undocumented functionality that exists within Zcash D that was inherited from Bitcoin. So uh, I want to thank Strad and uh, all of the uh, ECC engineers for their help um, in contributing to that project. The other massive project that, uh, that we've been working on is Frost. Um, Frost is a threshold signature scheme that addresses the problem that you can't use multisig with shielded ZEC. Multisig is um, a, a mechanism whereby you can require that multiple people are required to authorize a spend of transactions. It's used a lot by exchanges, by custodians to make sure that funds are held securely, but unfortunately, it's not possible to shield at ZEC. So Chelsea, um, along with Ian Goldberg at uh, the University of Waterloo, came up with the flexible round optimized Schnorr threshold signatures, continuing a long tradition of cryptographers finding innovative ways to create acronyms out of the names of their papers. Um, so this is, um, this is not just useful for Zcash. It is of, uh, of far broader uh, application 
in the, in the realm of, uh, of privacy, and as such, it is currently uh, being evaluated by the Internet Research Task Force for adoption as an informational RFC. But we have um, created a Rust implementation of Frost, and that's currently undergoing audit. No major issues so far. And um, the next step really is to start then implementing it for Zcash. So a zip has been drafted, the security proof of the Frost for the re-randomized um, technology that Zcash uses um, is currently underway. And if you want to learn more about that, you can join the wallet stream um, on the final day of Zcon 4, and uh, you'll be able to hear more there from some of the team who are working on that. I think um, as, we, as we move forward, the ability to do multi-sig style uh, threshold signatures will become increasingly important. It's something that's really necessary, as I said, for exchanges and custodians to be able to secure their funds. And also, it'll be very useful when we start getting into doing cross-chain interoperability. Next up, the third big pillar of what we do at the foundation is uh, community and ecosystem support. So obviously, we organize Zcon. And at this point, I just want to really acknowledge the amount of work and effort, uh, blood, sweat, and tears that has gone into this event um, by some of the team, particularly Danica, who's sitting uh, right back there. Um, not sure how much sleep she's had uh, recently, but uh, um, it takes an awful lot of effort to put this event on. And I just want to give Danica, Alex, and the rest of the team, uh, Dee, Dan, John, the whole team, have, uh, have it, it really is a team effort. I hold absolutely no uh, credit for this event. It is entirely our, our ops team, so I just want to give them a big round of applause. <clears throat> and if they weren't gluttons for punishment enough, they decided to do it twice this year. So uh, this year saw the first of our um, uh, Zcon Voices events. Um, as Jason mentioned, the Zcash Brazil community is vibrant and, uh, and very, very successful. So we partnered up with them to deliver Zcon Voces, which is our first regional event. And we hope that funding permitting, we will do more of those going forward. And this is, this is a situation where unlike Zcon, unlike this Zcon, where we take the lead on organizing it, uh, arranging the agenda, et cetera. This is a situation where we partnered with the Zcash Brazil community they found the venue, they organized um, the speakers, the schedule, the, the content, and we merely provided the sort of operational support uh, and financial support that was necessary to, to make it possible. As was alluded uh, by, to by Jason, we support the operations of the Zcash Community Grants Committee. Um, you know, I think that there, again, our ops team are really instrumental in making, making sure that things run smoothly there. Um, we also have uh, recently launched uh, our own minor grants program. And it's, it's worth bearing in mind that the Zcash Foundation was originally set up as a grants giving organization. And it issued grants to organizations like Zach Wallet, with, um, to the Nighthawk team. Um, so um, when the major grants, what's now called the Zcash Community Grants uh, program started, that kind of distracted us away from our from our original mission of, of giving grants. So this is kind of really returning to, to that original mission, but doing so in a different way. With major grants, um, you know, there, there's a certain sort of expectation of thresholds that, that you should reach. Um, you're expected to be a team with a, uh, with a you know, reasonable prospect of surviving the departure of any, of any one member of that team. With minor grants, um, we're far more it's, it's, it's intended to be a lower threshold, uh, smaller projects, um, including quite happy to, to evaluate applications by, by individual applicants. And the idea is that we then provide the beginnings of a path where you can get involved in the Zcash ecosystem, apply for a minor grant. If you're successful, you can then potentially apply for a major grant. And then the ultimate goal of all of this is to allow people to then, at some point in the future, um, apply for a slice of, a, of this or a future dev fund. But, um, so that, that first minor grants um, program went really well. Um, we, we tried an experiment where we polled the Zcash Community Advisory Panel to decide which grant applications should be, 
should be uh, approved. I think that went really, really well. So we're going to be uh, running another minor grants program straight after Zcon as soon as we've uh, as soon as we we've, we've recovered and caught up on our sleep. And um, if you're interested in doing some paid work or contribution to the Zcash ecosystem, I would strongly advise that you keep an eye out for when those applications open. We've also been issuing uh, what I call research grants, um, looking at programmability and uh, privacy preserving proof of stake. So a couple of years ago, we polled Zcap on what they believed the priorities should be for, for the Zcash ecosystem. And two of the top things were moving away from proof of work, and proof of stake is the obvious uh, destination for that, and um, uh, adding programmability to, uh, to Zcash. Um, obviously, the, the, the top priority that they identified was, was um, adding, adding ZSAs, and that, as you heard from Jonathan, that work is well underway. We also, over the past year, spun up, thanks to Ryan Taylor, uh, the Zcash Foundation AV Club. So this is a uh, grouping of people who meet regularly and who deal with all things uh, AV related. And they are going to be very active here at Zcon. Um, and we'll expect that uh, you'll be able to see a lot of the content that they're creating uh, coming out over the next uh, few weeks and months. And finally, we protect the Zcash trademark. This is uh, sometimes uh, a controversial question. People say, why do we need a trademark? Well, the simple fact is that people want to abuse the Zcash name to defraud others. So there are scams like uh, Zcash Global, which has defrauded people out of uh, many tens of thousands of pounds. They were based in the UK. We managed to get that successfully taken down. And we're just currently awaiting for the transfer of the zlend.cash domain uh, to us, which we've uh, successfully applied to have seized. And this, again, is another example of a website where people abuse the Zcash name. They're looking to, to defraud people out of money. And that's uh, one of the main reasons that we want to make sure that we have that we have strong trademark protections for the Zcash trademark. Moving on, I want to talk a little bit about geographic decentralization. Um, it's been a topic of conversation within the community over the past couple of years that uh, the Zcash ecosystem is heavily concentrated in the United States. Both ECC and the Zcash Foundation are US domiciled organizations. And you know, it's worth saying that the US is a, is a good environment in many respects. The 501c3 structure, the nonprofit structure that, we, um, that, that the Zcash Foundation and the Bootstrap Organization, the parent of ECC, is a very good structure. It provides really strong protections. You know, it's tax efficient. You'll end up paying large amounts of money to the government in tax. And um, it provides very strong transparency. Um, and also, one of the great advantages about the United States is that the First Amendment protects the right to write software. And that was a key factor in the, uh, the, the privacy uh, uh, side's victory in the original crypto war back in the 1990s. However, there are regulatory headwinds. There does seem to be a, a faction within the, uh, the, the, the powers that be in the United States who don't want to see crypto succeed, and that creates a fair amount of uncertainty, and we perceive that as risk. So I'm pleased to be able to say that we have uh, begun the process of setting up a nonprofit entity in the Cayman Islands. Um, it may even be fully complete by the time this conference is over. We're just waiting for the final bits of paperwork to be done. And the plan is that this new entity will become an operating entity. Um, we will transfer some of the activities that the Zcash Foundation currently undertakes, likely um, the more internationally focused activities, uh, to that new entity and get it up and running and functioning. And the goal is to ensure that if the United States becomes a hostile environment for either crypto or privacy preserving crypto specifically, our goal is to ensure that we don't end up uh, suffering any significant negative consequences to Zcash as a result of that. Thank you. Yeah, I think you know, the, it, it, it's really important that we ensure that Zcash is indestructible. 
In a technical sense, it is because anybody can run a node, but as has been highlighted, the, uh, the dev fund going to a small number of US-based organizations does represent a risk. So this is, this is what we believed was the, best, uh, was the best solution to that. So I have 20 seconds, seconds left. I just want to finish off by saying that the theme is of this year's conference is the future has not yet been written. So let's write it together as a unified community with a shared vision for Zcash. And with that, we're going to take a little bit of a break. And next up, we'll be hearing from <laughs> Daniel Benarok and Ying Tong about the research they've been doing into programmability for Zcash. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>